Hello guys and welcome back. Let's solve a new lead code problem. So to this problem is to find the lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. So note here, it's not binary search tree, but it's a binary tree. So here you are given a tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the tree. So again, the definition for an LCA or lowest common ancestor is the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes P and Q as the lowest node in T that has both P and Q as descendant. Also here where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. So for example, two and four here, like the lowest common, uh, common ancestor is two. All right. So first let's go through the constraints. So here we have the number of nodes it is between two and 10 to the power of five. And the value, the node dot value is between minus 10 to the power of nine and 10 to the power of nine here, which is super important is that all the nodes or all the values of the nodes are unique. And also we have P is different from Q. And also we have finally P and Q will exist in the tree. So like we don't have like these edge cases to check before. So first of all, let's assume that this is a binary search tree and we want to find Q equals five and P equals one. So here in a binary search tree, we know that all the elements on the left hand side of the tree will be less than the root and all the elements on the right hand side of the tree will be greater than the root. But this is not the case. So what can we do or how can we solve this problem? So here, assuming we want to find two nodes or like the LCA of five and one, which is this one and this one. And it is in this case, we want to return the value or the node with the value three. All right, so here we will be using a DFS, a depth first search. So a DFS, we will go, for example, like left and then right to find the elements that we are looking for. So here we want to start from the node, is the node equals to P or Q? which is not, so in, in this case it's false. So I want to go to the left side. Is this node equals to Q or P? Is it equals to five or one, which is true. So all I need to do is to return the node to this one. So I will be returning five to the parent node. Then I do not need to go here since I already found one element. So what I need to do, I will check on the left, on the right hand side of the tree. So here, does this element equals five or one? Yes, it's true. And then I will return the node with the value one here. So here, when we come here and at this phase or at this level, we check if the left node or the left result is not null and the right result is not null. So the current node is the lowest common ancestor of the given two nodes. So this is the first case. Now let's take another example. So here, let's assume that we want to find the lowest common ancestor for the value five and the value four. So I will want to find this one and this one. So here we see that the lowest common ancestor is this node five. So let's go ahead and check how we can solve this one. So again, in the same way, we will start from the root. So does this value equals five or four? Or four? False. So let's go left. So five, does it equal to five or four. Yes, it's true. So I will return five here and I can stop. So I don't need to go further. So we don't need to do that because we already found one element. So now I will go to the left, to the right hand side. So does one equals five or four false. So I will check the left. So the false, like I will mark it uh, this way. So now I will go to the left. So does zero equals five or four? false. So then like zero does not have any children or like any leaves. So I don't need to go and check there. So now I will go to the right hand side and I will check does eight equals eight, uh, five or four, which is not. So here we will return null. So I will return null here and here I will return null. So now what did we receive at this level? We received a node with value five and a null. All right. So in this case, we will return the one or like the, the node that has a non null value. So in this case, our LCA or lowest common ancestor will be the node five, as you can see in here. So this is the second case. Let's go ahead and try the third one. All right. So now let's check Q equals two and P equals seven. 
So in this case, we start as always from here. Does this value equals two or seven? No, so we go left. Does five equals two or seven? No, we go left. Does six equals two or seven? No, we go left and we return null in here. So then we go to the right hand side. So here do we have two. Does two equals two or seven? Yes, true. So here we mark it with true and this one is false, this one is false. So we return the node two to the parent, all right? And then we go up here. So now let's go to the right, the right hand side. So here we will be returning two, all right? So let's keep this in mind. Now we will go to the right hand side. So here does one equals two or seven, false. We check this one, it will be false. We check this one, it will be false. And then we'll be returning null in here. So here we have two. So like I will just mark it in this way. So it will be clear and easy to see. So here we return two, all right? So here we have two and we have null. So both of them, like they both, like one of them is different or like not equal null and the other one equals null. So we need to return this one. And this is the lowest common ancestor of two and seven. It will be the same one if, for example, we change P with four. So we will find this one here and we will find this one here. So like seven, it will be equal. So we will return seven here. And then we need to go the ch to check the other one. It will be four and then we, we will return four to this node and then we will return the node itself. All right, so because like this one is not null and this one is not null, if both of them are not null, we need to return the current node. So the ex I hope the explanation was clear. Now we can go through the code and see how this is gonna be. So like the implementation is quite simple and quite easy and I will explain to you the code line by line. Are you looking to dive into the world of data science, machine learning or coding with Python? Brilliant is the platform that brings all of these fields into one place, offering an immense and interactive learning experience where you can not only learn but also practice as you go. No more struggling to understand tough concepts or searching for scratched resources, Brilliant makes it easy. The visually engaging lessons, complete with animated presentation, helps break down even the most challenging topics, making them easier to digest and retain. If you need a refresher or want to dive deeper into math concepts, Brilliant is the perfect place to go. From algebra and calculus to more advanced areas like linear algebra or for graphic programming or probability for data science, they have it all. I love how incredibly convenient it is to quickly find the lessons I need. Whether I'm brushing up on complex numbers or tackling new ideas on machine learning. Personally, I use Brilliant whenever I need a quick and accessible refresher or if I want to challenge myself with material. The platform's clear step-by-step -step lessons makes it easy to stay engaged and continue improving without feeling overwhelmed. If you're interested, I highly recommend giving Brilliant a try. You can explore all their offerings with a 30-day free trial. And if you decide to stick around, you'll get 20% of an annual subscription by visiting brilliant.org slash Ali. All right, so this is the code or like this is solution for this problem. So here first, the first thing we want to check if the root is null, so we just return null. Otherwise, the first thing or like the first check we need to do if my root equals p, so like here we have the values or like we can just directly uh, check the nodes if the root equals p or q. So we just return the root itself. So this is the base case that we spoke about in the beginning. Otherwise, I will store two variables. One is the result that will come from the left hand side and the other one is the result that will be coming from the right hand side. So in this one, we will do a recursive call to the, to the same function itself and we will check until we find something or we reach the end of, of the tree and then we will return null. We will do the same for the right hand side. We will go like recursively to uh, through the tree or like the different elements or the different nodes of the tree and we will do the same check. Once we get results, we want to do some check. So here we mentioned in the beginning that if we receive two values from the left hand side and the right hand side of the tree, we return the root itself. So in, the, in this case, or like in the case, we wanted to search for, for five and one. So we know that three is the root. Otherwise, if the left hand side, or like if we got a null result from the left hand side, 
of the tree, we know that the result will exist on the right hand side. If L is not null, we are sure that we can return that result. So that was it for this problem. I hope you got the intuition and I hope the solution was simple and as well the explanation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more and more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.